Shalom Shaloms, and greetings from Teshua Community. I am Ima Rafaya, and I'm back with you today with the word reverence. And we're going to expound on it just a little bit more so that we can come to a full understanding on what the word reverence means, daughters. We need to learn truly how to reverence Almighty Yah and how to reverence our ish. But before I begin, we're going to have our little ones. They're going to come before us and they're going to sing us a selection. We will hear from our Hebrew boys and then we'll hear from Zachariah who will quote the Ten Commandments. So now we will hear from our young people. Hallelujah. Scriptures from our two young Ark, Asher and Yeshai. Ephesians 4, in, in that ye put on a new man which after Yah has created in righteousness and true Kodesh. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Hallelujah! Hallelujah. One of the youngest one among us is going to quote the Ten Commandments, Zachariah. Zachariah is four years old. The Ten Commandments of Yahweh. You shall not have no God before me, Yahweh. You shall not make to you any carved image or any likeness of anything that is from above, or that is earth beneath, or that is under the earth. 
understand the word reverence. It's more than just one component in life. It's many components that add up to that one powerful word, reverence. And daughters, and under, for us to understand how we can, must do this, we must be taught. And the only way you're going to be taught and taught correctly is by obeying this Torah truth. I want to read a story about a man Elazar, and he was a learned man according to the Torah. And can I tell you, he had the wisdom from Almighty Yah. So I want to start reading from the book of Maccabees, and we're going to start in chapter 5, verse 14. And it says, When the tyrant Antiochus urged Elazar in this fashion to eat meat, unlawfully, Elazar asked to have a word with him because he wanted to explain his situation and the type of man that he was. Verse 15, it says, When Elazar had received permission to speak, he began to address the people as following. He said, We, O Antigas, who have been persuaded to govern our lives by Yahweh's Torah, think that to be persuaded to govern our lives by the Torah of Yahweh. He says, we are persuaded to govern our lives by Yahweh's Torah daily. And we have the power, and we must have this power in our obedience. Now, Antiochus knew that Eleazar was a learned man according to the Torah. And Antiochus, his purpose was to destroy the Hebrew Israelites. He knew that. And, he, and, and he, he was persuaded in his own mind that these people must do as I command. But Eleazar said no. So, as I said, Eleazar, Eleazar was a leader of the Hebrews, and he was learned it in the Torah, and he was known for his wisdom. And can I tell you, Antiochus, his purpose was to destroy the Hebrew Israelites. But Eleazar was a man that reverenced Almighty Yah. He reverenced him by keeping the Torah truth. And can I tell you, my daughters, that's what we must do. We must walk this way daily. Hallelujah. Let me go to verse 18. It says, even, it says, therefore, 17, it says, therefore, we consider that we should not transgress the Torah in any respect, even if, as you suppose, 
our Torah were not truly Yahweh's, and we have wrongfully held it to be Yahweh's, not even so, would it be right for us to invalidate our reputation for pity? He said, we're not asking for your hasi. We're just going to make a stand. No, do what you have to do, ain't tigers. But we have made a stand for Almighty Yah. For we do reverence the Mighty One. Therefore, do not suppose that we are asking for pity for this sin. For we will not defile ourselves with eating unclean meat. So, daughters, if this man made a stand, you say, well, that was in the days of old. Well, Almighty Yah has not changed. He is, same, he is the same today, yesterday, and forevermore. So we must make a stand in our lives. And we're not going to eat anything unclean because Yah has told us what things that are clean that we should eat, and He has shown us what things are unclean. But this man reverence Almighty Yah by his daily living, and we must make that same stance in this life too. So I told Yah that he, this man, in his reputation, he was known. Moshe in his reputation, he was known. Abraham made a stand, and he was known for his reputation. I want to be known for mine also. That every day that I live, I live for Almighty Yah. And I'm not drawn with the things that the world offers. Moshe said, I'd rather suffer with the people of Yah than to take on the things of the world and to be like the world and to dress like the world and to act like the world. We, was, we must make a stand in Almighty Yah. Maccabees 5 and 20, it says, To transgress the Torah in matters either small or great is all equal and seriousness. For in either case, the Torah is equally despised. So he's saying here, the, so if I eat the unclean meat, I'm going to be despised. And if I strive to do what's right, I'm still going to be despised. So you scoff at our philosophy as though living by it were irrational. But I will make a stand for Almighty Yah. So whatever you do, Antiochus, Yah's will will be done in my life. Hallelujah. Maccabees 5 and 23. It teaches us self-control so that we master all pleasures and desires and it also trains us in courage so that we endure any suffering willfully. Do you hear me, daughters? No matter what our trials are, we will not deny Almighty Yah. We're going to endure willfully. Willingly, I mean. Hallelujah. Willingly, we will make a stand because we are the people of Yah. We have no doubt that whatever we go through, that Yah is going to deliver. You must understand that. We must wait on Almighty Yah. We're not going to be in a hurry. We're going to make a stand and we shall see the Yahshak of Almighty Yah. But let me go to Psalms 135, verse 13. And it reads, Thy name, O Yah, endures forever, and thy memorial, O Yah, throughout all generations. So we must endure, because Yah changes not. So if He changes not, once we come to the knowledge of this truth, we must obey and we can't go back. Hallelujah. Praise Yah. I want to go to Matthew chapter 24, verse 13. And it reads, 24 and 13, it says, But he that shall endure until the end, the same shall be saved. We can't get weary in well-doing. You can't be like the world. You can't do a little bit of the world today and then obey Yah tomorrow. It must be a consistency in our walk. 
In your consistency, Yah will give you strength. And in that, you will learn how to reverence Almighty Yah. Hallelujah. Maccabees 5 and 24. The Torah, it instructs us in justice so that in all our dealings, we act, we act upon it and it teaches us meekness so that with proper reverence, we bow down to the only real Almighty Yah. Hallelujah. So as we learn and as we're instructed in this way, we know how to reverence Almighty Yahweh. And you say, well, once I come to the knowledge of the truth, I'll just read and I'll just study and I'll know what's right to do. No, daughters, we must be instructed in this walk of life. You must hear the shepherd and there will be aged ones among you to help assist you in this walk of truth. I didn't come to this by reading this book on my own. I came to this knowledge and this understanding of how I should represent Almighty Yah by hearing the messenger and by watching other daughters of to Zion in their faithfulness. That has helped me on my journey. And in order for us to do this thing right, we must be hearers of this truth. Once we hear, you become doers of this truth. Hallelujah. So we want to go back to Maccabees 5 and 25, and it says, Therefore, we do not eat defiling food, for since we believe that the Torah was established by Almighty Yah, we know that in this nature, the things of the Creator, the world, in giving us the Torah, has shown kindness towards us. Almighty Yah has shown us kindness. By sending Yahshua HaMashiach. Not because we were so kind or we were so sweet. Because we did things right. No. Yah sent Yahshua to save a people like us. I was wretched. I wasn't even fit for hell. I couldn't go into the kingdom because I wasn't worthy. But by Yah sending Yahshua HaMashiach, I've learned the disciplines of Torah. And I strive every day to do that which is pleasing unto him. So Yah has commanded us how we should walk, how we should keep truth by His Son, Yahshua, Hamashiach. Not Jesus, but Yahshua. In Jesus, you can be a faggot. In Jesus, you can be a lesbian. In Jesus, you can be a prostitute, but not in Yahshua, Hamashiach. There are only a few. There are not many. As the days of Noah was, so shall it be in the coming of Yahshua HaMashiach. There are not many people that want to be set apart. In this walk of life, you must be set apart. You can't look like the world. You can't rap for Yahshua. You can rap for Jesus, but not in Yahshua. Hallelujah. I want to go to Hebrews chapter 12, verse 7. It says, if you endure chastising, discipline, Yah deals with you as with sons. For what son does the father not discipline? So in this life you must be disciplined. You must be chastised. And you say, why? It's for your health and well-being. You must be disciplined, daughters, in this world. Yes, Yah is going to chastise you. When you have children, you correct your children. That's all chastisement is. It's to keep you in the straight and narrow path. So when you have a child and they're doing something out of the norm, you're going to pull that child over to the side and say, Billy, you can't do that. So Billy, this is a warning. Now if you do that again, I'm going to spank you. Oh, that's mean, that's cruel. If you don't, y'all said that you're supposed to correct your children. As he corrects us, we correct our little ones. We must be examples so that they can see. So in this walk, you must be chastised. You must be corrected. That's, uh, it, that's true, Ahava. When you really love your children, you're not worried about what nobody else says. You want to only do it according to the truth. When you truly love your child, that's what you will do. You, you just don't overlook it or sweep it under the rug. 
You want them to know that what you're doing is wrong. When they're doing something right, you want to, what do you, what the word I'm looking for? You want to encourage them when they're doing something right. Hallelujah. So Hebrews uh, chapter 12, verse 9, it says, I'm sorry. Yes, verse 9, it says, furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh which correct us, and we gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subjection to the Abba of the Ru'ah and live? So when you correct your child, or even when you correct yourself, you shall live. When you continue in your old vile ways, then you shall die. Praise God. Verse 10, it says, For they truly, for a few days, discipline us after their own understanding, your father of the flesh, but Yah, for our profit, that we might be partakers of his Kodesh nature. So we want to have the nature of Almighty Yah. We must be corrected. We must be chastised. No chastisement doesn't always feel tough. When Rayak has to correct me about anything, it doesn't feel tough to the flesh. But if you receive it by and by, and you understand why he did it, I understand why he does it. And I told her, yeah, that he corrects me, that he don't let me do things any kind of way or just talk any kind of way or go on my feelings and emotions. But I must be led by the Ru'ah, and he is the messenger for this hour in this place. Hallelujah. Verse 11 reads, Now no discipline for the present seems to be joyous, and it's not, but grievous. It says, Nevertheless, Afterward, it yields the peaceable fruit of shalom and righteousness to them which exercise thereby. Hallelujah. So we need to be instructed on how to reverence Almighty Yah, how to reverence our ish. And I want to go to Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 1. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, daughters, we need instruction in this walk of life. Don't kid yourself. You need instruction. All right, Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 1. It says, Now therefore hearken, hear, O Israel, unto the statutes, unto the judgments, which I, Moshe, his messenger, shall teach you, for to do them that you may live. And go in and possess the land which Yahweh has promised you. So we must be instructed. You must have a messenger in this hour to lead and guide you in all truth. And in our obedience, it teaches us how to reverence Almighty Yah. Totally Yah. Hallelujah. Yes, daughters, I have been young and I'm old. When I started this walk, it was 44 years ago. And every step of the way, I had to have instruction. Even when you're on a job, you must be instructed. You, you must follow the steps that they show you on a job to go on a, with the procedure that they have. You can't say, well, I'm going to do it my way. No, there are instructions that you must follow to keep things flowing freely. And in this walk, you must be instructed, you must shema, you must hear, and you must obey to get the job done. So in order to live, you must have instructions. And it's by following the Torah truth, by obeying the commandments and the statutes of Almighty Yah. Why see that you reverence your husband? Leviticus 19, verse 30. You shall keep my Shabbat and reverence my Mizpah place. I am Yahweh. The keeping of the commandments of Almighty Yah is his reverence. It is. You obey what he has asked us to do. And can I tell you, you must take great delight in keeping the Torah true and keeping the Mizpahs of Almighty Yah. When you take great delight in something, you will see it in your expression, your daily living, and you'll be happy about it. 
the way we live here, we help each other. It encourages us when we see another one striving to do that which pleases Almighty Yah. I have young daughters here, and then there are older women here. And I don't see anybody that's sad. We're truly happy for what Yah has done for us. Not because we have done something so great, but because Yah has shown us his hasi, his kindness, that he has a few elect that are striving every day to do that which is pleasing before him. Hallelujah. It says, the way that you keep your mind unto Almighty Yah is by being a hearer of this truth. It will keep your mind at Shalom. That's what keeps me happy, daughters, is that as I pick up this book daily, this is our daily bread, the lechem from the Shemayah. It keeps you from day to day. Hallelujah. Now, you know, King David, David, he was a man, he was Yah's chosen. Yes, Dawit fell. And Yah had chosen him to build him a bed. But because of the king's sin, he couldn't build it for Almighty Yah. So let's read a little bit about King Dawid. And we're going to start with 1 Kings chapter 1, verse 28. It says, Then came King Dawid, answered and said, Call me Bathsheba. And she came unto the king's presence, and she stood before him. Now Bathsheba was a woman of Almighty Yah. She knew the commandments. She practiced keeping the Torah. Can I tell you what happened to King Dawid? He should have went out to battle. He didn't. He was in his home. He was probably idle. And he looked and he saw Bathsheba. And for the king to take notice of her, she had to be a beautiful woman. If he had been out to battle, then the enemy, the enemy of his mind, would not have drawn him. So the king swore and said, as Yahweh lives, that has redeemed my nephesh out of all my distresses, even as I swore to you by Yahweh, the sovereign master, Yahshua HaMashiach of Israel, saying, Certainly, Solomon, your son, shall reign after me, and he shall sit upon my throne in my stead. Even so will I certainly do this day. See, because of this sin, it wasn't the sin that he slept with Bathsheba, it's because he had her husband killed, Uriah. Uriah was a man that loved Almighty Yah, and he reverenced him. Bathsheba reverenced her ish, but she had no power over the king. So when the guards went and got Bathsheba, she had to be obedient, and she went before the king. And Bathsheba bowed down before the king. But Yah said because Dawid's hands were filthy with blood, he could not build him a tabernacle. So his son that reigned in his stead did so. Hallelujah. I want to go to Tehelium 89 and 5. And the Shemayims praised Yahweh because of his wonders. O oh, Yahweh, your faithfulness also in the congregation of the Kedushans. Can I tell you, even the Shemayims obey Almighty Yahweh. They reverence him. The sun reverence him by rising and shining when Yah tells it to come forth. The moon at night, it rules at night. It reverence Almighty Yahweh. And we as a people that say we follow Torah truth, we must reverence Almighty Yah. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians 4 and 2. Moreover, it is required in us being faithful stewards that we must be found faithful in all of our doing. Hallelujah. I want to read Ecclesiastes 5 and 1. Praise Yah. Ecclesiastes 5, 1 and 2. 
It says, keep thy foot when thou goest to the bed of Yahweh, and be more ready to hear than to give the sacrifice of fools, for they consider not that they do evil. Be not rash with your mouth, and let not thine heart be hasty to utter anything before Yah. And Yah is in the Shemayim and upon the Olam. Therefore, let your words be few. Daughters, we must talk, be taught to study to be quiet. No, you don't need to be heard for your much speaking. But as you walk this walk, you will understand. By and by, you don't need to be heard all the time. We must discipline our lives as women of Yah, that we may be able to help another daughter that's young in this walk. Hallelujah. So when you go into the bay yet, be ready to hear the messenger that you may discipline your nephesh. You know, you say, well, the enemy made me say this or she made me say that. Can I tell you who the enemy is? It's your mind, your thoughts, what you think. It's not what anybody else thinks. It's what you say to yourself, what you allow up here. If you look at um, soap operas all day long, can I tell you, all those vile things that are on television, that's what's going to be in your mind. You won't have Almighty Yah on your mind. So when you're picking up, the first thing when you get up in the morning doors, if you would just pray first. Get on your knees before Yah. Pick up your daily bread. Just make time for Almighty Yah. And he will order your steps aright, how you should present yourself before him every day. Hallelujah. So on this walk, I've learned that. I don't get up looking at television. We don't, we don't look at television here. Yes, we have computers, and yes, we do look at YouTube, but we discipline ourselves. And that's what you, the people that are not in a place like this, that's what you need to do to be more to be an overcomer, and to be victorious every day of your life. Hallelujah. I want to go to Ecclesiastes chapter 8, verse 1. It says, Who is as the wise man? Who is as a wise daughter? And who knows the interpretation of a thing? A man's wisdom makes his face to shine, and the boldness of his face shall be changed. Daughters, we must hear counsel from those that are wiser than us. And the only way someone will know that you're wise is by what you utter from your mouth. I used to always tell young women when they would first come here, you know, an empty wagon makes a lot of noise. And if you're just talking all day long about nothing, then that's what you are, an empty wagon. So if you govern your ru'ah and study to be quiet, no one will know what you know. But by your actions and your deeds, they'll know that this must be a wise daughter. So you work willingly with your hands and not so much with your mouth. People will know that you have an experience with Almighty Yah. And I've learned that over these many years. I study to be quiet. When I'm in my home, I don't do a whole lot of talking. I let Rayab do the talking. And I'm, I govern my Ruah by the things that he says. He's not a man that's given over to laughing and telling jokes, <clears throat> but he's a man that's given over to the Torah. And it, is, it has truly helped me, daughters, over these many, many years. And that's why I practice being an example to the daughters of Zion here in this place. Hallelujah. I want to go to Psalms 128. I want to read verses 1 and 2. It says, Barak, blessed, is everyone that fears Yah, that walk in his ways. For you shall eat the labor of your hands. Happy shall you be, and it shall be well with you. So you shall be happy when you truly learn how to walk before Almighty Yah. And you work willingly with your hands. Don't worry about your neighbor. You make sure you're doing what's right. You govern your ruah, your spirit, at all times. It's not so much as what someone does to you. It's how you respond. 
You know, one time there was a um, a man on Rayok's job, and he said, uh, I don't like to use the N word, but he said, if I say N, 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 N all day, he said, would that bother you? Rayok said, no, it wouldn't bother me. He said, because I know I'm not there. I'm not there. He said, so you can haul it from uh, the building top. He says, I'm not there. And from just that, that wouldn't bother me. You know, at the time it wouldn't bother me. But now I know who I am in Yahshua HaMashiach. So I have power to rule my life. And you can call colored girl, colored girl all day. I know I'm not a colored girl, but I'm a daughter of Tazion. So by the name calling, that doesn't bother me because I know who I am. I can just walk by and say, okay, that's a fool. You're no fool by what comes out of her mouth or his mouth. Hallelujah. I want to go to Deuteronomy. Praise you Chapter 4, verse 15. It says, therefore, take tough heed to yourself. For you saw no matter of similitude on the day the Yah speck unto Moshe and Horeb out of the midst of the fire. It says, so you corrupt yourself. Just take heed to yourself. Examine yourself. Make sure you're doing that which is righteous. Can I tell you, you know what you're doing. Can I tell you by nature, by nature, you know what's right to do and you know what's wrong to do. You can say, oh, she made me go off. Nobody can make me go off. You study to be quiet. You think before you speak. Nobody can make you go off. Daughters in us practicing what is right to do. You'll know how to reverence Almighty Yah in your daily living. You'll know how to honor and to reverence your ish by your daily living. By eating this book. Grab hold to it. And eating it and applying it to you. And then you won't be concerned about your neighbor. Because you know you're doing what's right. Mothers when you have children. You must be an example that they can pattern their lives after. If you're already having a. Uh, 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 you don't know how to manage your anger. Then you need to fast and pray. And let this living Torah get in you. Hallelujah. I want to read Exodus chapter 6. Praise you. We the people of Yah, we have power over everything we do. Once you learn how to obey completely. So I want to read Exodus 6 and 6. It says, Wherefore, say unto the children of Israel, I am Yahweh, and I will bring you out from under the bondage of the Egyptians, and I will rid you out of their bondage, and I will redeem you with a stretched out arm and with great judgment. When we practice what is righteous, Yah will redeem you. He spoke to Moshe, and he told Moshe to speak to the people of Yah. And if you take time and you just shamak, then you can apply this truth to your life. I told her, Yah, for being in a place like this. I told her, Yah, for wanting to strive for excellence. The only thing I want to do is to please Almighty Yah. It doesn't matter what my neighbor thinks. It doesn't matter what anybody else. The world's not going to receive you anyway. When they look at me, they just see an oddball. An all oddball. I don't care about that. I truly do not. I just care about pleasing Yah. I want his acceptance. So by me practicing this truth and hearing the messenger, there comes about a change. So I have a change in my life, not because I was tough, but because Yah has showed me his kindness. And I told Yah for that. I want to go to 1 Timothy chapter 6. I want to read first. 11 and 12. It says, But you, O man of Yah, flee these things. You, O daughter of Yah, flee these things and follow after 
righteousness, faith, emona, love, ahava, patience, meekness. Fight the tough fight of emona. Lay hold of eternal life whereunto you are call, also called and have professed a tough profession before many witnesses. Can I tell you there are many eyes looking at you. When you think no one's looking, your neighbor is looking. Your sister, your brother, your kinsman, they're looking. And they're waiting to see, is she going to continue to walk that way? Can I tell you, I've been walking this way for 44 years. I haven't gotten weary. I just strive to do a more excellent job. Yes, I talk to some of my kinsmen every now and then, and they know that I have not changed. I've been faithful in this walk because I know what Yahshua has done for me. As he has died for you, you must understand the power of it. He died and he suffered great and many afflictions that he shouldn't have, but he did it to save you and to save me. So you must arm yourself likewise. As faithful as Yahshua is, you must be also. And it's not hard. Hallelujah. Praise Yah. Let us look at Psalms 25 and 4. Hallelujah. And it reads, Show me your way, O Yahweh. Teach me your path. Lead me in your truth. And teach me, for thou art Yahweh, my salvation. On you do I wait all the day. So, Yahweh, I don't do anything in haste. I wait on Almighty Yah. And when I'm not sure about something, I will seek him. I will get on my knees and pray. And say, Yah, your will be done in my life. Sometimes you want to pray for a different way. But you have to be led by Almighty Yah. And you will know. He's not going to say maybe. He's, he's either going to say yay, yes, or nay, no. It's not going to be in anything in between. So we have to understand that and just wait on Almighty Yah. Hallelujah. As I said, I've been young and now I'm old. I'm not weary in doing that which is righteous before Almighty Yah. I study to be quiet. I get, don't move out of my place. My ish, my husband, is the head of my house. I reverence him. I take great delight in his fellowship. I show the young daughters here how they must reverence their ish. My young daughter behind the camera, we, like I said, we deliver our babies here, daughters. You say, well, what? I, we never worry about what's going to go wrong. We just trust Almighty Yah. And our, in our obedience brings the righteousness of Almighty Yah. My daughter has five children and one on the way. And we're waiting for that sixth child. Yes, I assist her ish in delivering the babies. And not one time do we ever panic because we trust Almighty Yah. Hallelujah. Psalms 89 and 6. It says, For who in the heaven can be compared to Almighty Yah? Who among the sons of the mighty can be like unto your way? There is none that we can compare to Almighty Yah but your sure Hamashiach. Who, I mean, what friend do you have is willing to lay down his life for you? You don't have any friends like that. They may say it in their, in their much speaking, but truly, do you have a friend that is willing to lay down their life for you? I learn even the more the greatness of what Yahshua has done in my daily living. This morning, it wasn't the alarm clock that woke me up. It was Yahshua HaMashiach. It was him that gave me the activity of my limbs, the breath that I breathe, the beat of my heart, my mind willing to praise him this morning. It was the hand of Yahshua HaMashiach. 
the fellowship with the daughters, learning how to love them, going to, to the dining hall this morning to assist the sisters, is because y'all put the desire there. I told y'all that I'm not out in the world. Because when you're out there, there's a great demand on you. And you smile even when you don't want to smile. But here I smile because I take great delight in the fellowship that we have here. The little ones, working with the little ones. Here, Rayak and I, Rayak is Poppy, and I'm Nani. And I'm everybody's grandmother. And I have not brought forth one child, but I told her, yeah, that I can truly be a grandmother and a grandmother indeed. When I get my little offering, I don't always just spend it on me. I have grandchildren, and I can share what little I have with my grandbabies. You know, what grand growing up, my grandmother always did much for me. She bought, she dressed my, I have an aunt that is eight months younger than I. So my grandmother growing up would always dress she and I alike. Once a month, I always got a new outfit. No shoes. Today, I still love shoes. shoes. I am shoe mama. And my grandmother always bought me beautiful shoes. She didn't buy cheap things. There was a store called Montado's when we were growing up in Charlotte, North Carolina. And can I tell you, when you went there, they wined and dined you. Can I tell you, I was intimidated when we would go there because I knew that they were, um, they had a little more than what we had. But when my grandmother went there, she didn't buy nothing. You couldn't buy anything cheap out of there. So my grandmother, when she bought things, she bought expensive things. And can I tell you, I always got beautiful shoes from my grandmother. To this day, I still like shoes. Shoe, just call me shoe mama because I do, I love shoes. But as I grew up having a discipline in my life, can I tell you I still have a discipline? Now, I still love shoes though. I have too many and most of the time I do, I just give them away. If I hadn't worn them, I just give them away. But we the people of y'all, we must have a discipline in our lives. And we must press to do those things that are pleasing before Almighty Yah. And we must truly learn to fear him. When you fear him, you will reverence him. Did you hear me? When you fear Almighty Yah, there's a great reverence and a respect that you have for Almighty Yah. Let me read Psalms 89 and 7. It says, Yahweh is greatly to be feared in the assembly of the Kedushans and to be had in reverence of all them that are about him. So if you're about Almighty Yah in your daily fellowship, there will be a great fear that you will have for him. Hallelujah. Psalms 89 and 8. It says, O sovereign master of hosts, who is a strong Yahweh like to you. O to your faithfulness round about you. So we as the people of Yah, we must fear him that others can see. It's not something that is hidden, but the fear that we have for Almighty Yah, others must see that. Hallelujah. Let me read Exodus uh, 4 and 12. Hallelujah. You must fear him. Hallelujah. Exodus 4 and 12. It says, and it reads, it says, now for, go and I will be with your mouth. He's talking to Moshe, and teach the pe I will teach you what you shall say. So, Moshe had a fear for Yah, but he was afraid that the people wouldn't receive him because of his speech imperative. But Yah said, you go, you just be obedient, and you, if the great fear that you have for me, just be disciplined in what you do. And when I tell you, when you get there, I'll tell you what you must say. And Moshe did. He was, he obeyed what Almighty Yahweh told him to do. Hallelujah. So we must be taught. Yah taught Moshe. You're going to have a messenger to teach you. And daughters, you can't be hard-headed. You can't get a, you can't get above the messenger. You can't get above Yah. Say, Yah's just dealing with me. He's not dealing with you. 
You must hear the messenger and you must be obedient to the messenger. You can't be hardy and high-minded. You must learn to be humble and shame-faced it. Hallelujah. Let me read uh, Wisdom uh, chapter 2, verse 1. It says, For the wicked say, reasoning with themselves, but not all right. Our life is short, and in the death of a man there is no remedy. Neither was there any man known to have returned from hell. Well, no, you're not going to return from hell. But y'all say, I set before you this day life and death. Choose. The way you die, daughters, if you die in righteousness when Yahshua return, you shall stand up as a righteous vessel. But if you die in wickedness when Yahshua raise you up, you will be ready for hell. So you must do that which is righteous, and you have to choose every day that Yah gives you breath. Am I going to do that which is pleasing with a great fear for Almighty Yah, or am I going to go on my feelings and my emotions? Your feelings and your emotions will get you hell. So when you get up in the morning, you pray and say, Yah, order my steps aright, that I sit not against you. Yah will hear your prayer. He will honor that. He will, as you reverence him and your obedience. Can I tell your daughters, if you die in that state, then when Yahshua returns, you will rise up in that state. Hallelujah. It says, for we are born at all adventure. We shall be hereafter as though we have never been. For the breath in our nostril is a smoke, and reason is a little spark in the moving of our heart. Being here on this olam, it's just only going to be a vapor of smoke. The way you live every day, that's how people will remember you. Not for your much speaking of your wickedness, but if you're much speaking of what you did in righteousness. Our lives are nothing but a vapor of smoke. We must strive every day to do that which is pleasing. And by our fear of Almighty Yahweh, our obedience, our being humble, our loving Yahweh with our whole being, an example unto Yah. And to sum up to me, the word reverence is care. When you truly care, you will love, you make yourself uncomfortable to go out for your loved ones. Yes, you will. When you truly reverence anyone, you will go out of your way to do that which is righteous. Not sometime, but all the time. If you love someone today, you're going to love them tomorrow, and the next day, and the next day. So when you love Almighty Yah, you will reverence Him in your obedience and your daily offering before Him. So I told you, y'all, for this time I'm able to come to you just to share a few scriptures. There are more. I will come back. But I just wanted to share that today. And as we strive to do that, which is right, daughters, just examine you and your pure Ahava that you have for Almighty Yah. And you must remember, Yahshua died for you and for me. We won't have an excuse on that great day of judgment will be without excuse. So let us practice that which is righteous every day. And nobody can make you sin because your thoughts are your thoughts. My thoughts are mine. So put the righteous weapons of warfare up here and you'll be able to overcome every day of your life. You'll be victorious every day. So I told the Yah for his kindness, his hot seed he's shown me this day. We will come back with you with more encouraging words for the daughters of Tazion. I am Ima Rafael here at Teshua Community. We bring you great tidings and all the daughters sends greetings to you other daughters on the other side. We hope to see you again, again soon. Yahweh Baruch you all. Have an excellent, excellent yam. 
in Yahshua HaMashiach. Yahweh Baruch you all.